Our word of God today is charged with amazing faith and love that should give us great hope. 25 years ago in the seminary, we had a guest professor come for a series of lectures. His name was Dr. Ewart Cousins. He's a well-published, well-renowned sociologist. His goal was to teach us about society in general, society we're going to enter into as priests to minister to. Of course, he talked about the growing secularization of society. His opinion, he said, this is the saddest generation in recorded history. The saddest generation in recorded history was his opinion. He talked about the restlessness of society, the unrest. It's not a new thing. St. Augustine once said, You created us for yourself, O Lord, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. So we have this restless heart within us, and God is the object of our desire. And all of the, the things of this world can never satisfy that desire of God. And so we are restless until we find God. So as we take God out of our lives, out of our culture, we become more and more uneasy and more restless, searching for something more in our lives. Now fast forward 25 years to today, and how is our society doing? seems worse to me. It seems more restlessness, more anti-God, more fear. I see fear in the eyes of people today. So throw the global pandemic on top of that, where the goalposts keep moving, experts can't agree, the future keeps changing, it seems to me, kind of murky. Kind of scary. My prior life and my CPA, I traveled a fair amount by small plane. I had several uh, clients that had their own plane. You know, they were businessmen with a weekend pilot license. weren't the most experienced pilots in the world. They always dragged me along on these business trips. Well, I had several really scary experiences. The worst was. One day coming back from Detroit, in the air for 25, 30 minutes, heading back to Escanaba. And I could see that the pilot was getting a little uneasy. <laughs> he said, we got some weather coming. I said, okay, that's nice. And boy, do we have some weather coming. It got really dark. Driving rain it turned to hail. Now, I was sitting in the, the, the co-pilot seat of a twin-engine Cessna. My knees were against the dash. The windshield was right here, in front of my face. It sounded like there was a machine gun hitting the, the windshield, the noise of the hail. It was pitch dark. Now, the worst part is going 200 miles per hour, not being able to see farther than your face. It was really scary. We kind of pop out of the clouds, out of the storm, this beautiful blue, calm sky. We, we kind of flew through it. It seems like life is like that sometimes. We're kind of flying through in the dark. We can't see the future. Well, think about Abraham in our reading today, our first reading. He's in his late 70s. He has a gift of his only son, Isaac, that he prayed for for decades. And now God is asking him to sacrifice his only son? Think of the faith he must have had to walk up that hill. There's a passage that's skipped in today's reading. It's really gut-wrenching to me. Isaac is carrying the wood for the fire of sacrifice on his shoulder. He's carrying the, the, the embers for the fire. He looks at Abraham, his father, and says, Father, here is the wood, and here is the fire, 
But where is the lamb? Abraham says, God will provide the lamb. And God did. Bible experts tell us that this Mount Moriah could very well be the hill of Calvary. Think of Isaac, the only son, carrying that wood on his shoulder up the hill of Calvary. And God providing the lamb. Fast forward to today's gospel. Jesus is on the way to Jerusalem, to the hill of Calvary. And for the first time, he tells his disciples clearly he's going to be crucified, suffer and die. Think of the darkness that was in front of them. And Jesus takes Peter, James, and John up the mountain and he's transfigured before them. A glimpse into the resurrection, into eternity. And there's Moses and Elijah, been dead for hundreds of years. They're there. It's a glimpse of heaven. It's a glimpse into eternity to see where they are going, to see where we are going. Have we lost our way? We've lost our sense of who we are, where we came from, and where we are going. We are God's beloved children. We came from a state of profound happiness, God, and the soul longs to return to the state of being from which we came. That's who we are. That's our purpose. And God wants us to know that. He sent his son into the world to show us who we are and where we are going. He wants us to follow him down the mountain, through this life, through the darkness of this life, through the uncertainty, but to have faith. Jesus took Peter, James, and John up that mountain for us. Not for them, not for himself, for us. God wants us to know what lies beyond the storms of this life. For every good Friday that we have in this world, Easter Sunday is coming. God wants us to know that and live that accordingly. Live our lives accordingly. It's who we are. Only in God can we satisfy that restlessness deep within us. Only in God can we find true joy and happiness. That's our purpose. That's who we are. And God wants us to know that and to live that. So come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of us, your faithful, and kindle in us the fire of your love. Amen.